Right now on To The Point, Senator Feinstein's final farewell. To me, she will be remembered as the most incredible grandmother. Her family and Washington insiders coming together, all proud of what the senator accomplished. Plus, Feinstein's impact in Sacramento, what she did for our levees and Lake Tahoe. A fire department's helicopter door falls from the sky, landing in a Granite Bay backyard. And why are baby spiders flying across Northern California? This is To The Point. I'm Becca Hoppiger. Alex Bell has the night off. Dianne Feinstein's family and Washington insiders came together in San Francisco today for a final farewell. They celebrated the senator not only as a trailblazer, but also as a legislator who fought for California. Our Jeannie Nguyen has the story. Now, hundreds of people have gathered in front of San Francisco City Hall today to pay their respects to Senator Dianne Feinstein. Now, this is where she began her career, and speakers ranging from the vice president to her granddaughter say they're very proud of everything the senator has accomplished for not only the state of California, but also for the country. This woman will remember Senator Dianne Feinstein the most. She showed young women everywhere that they too can be leaders, that they can make an impact, and that they deserve a seat at the table. Eileen Mariano joined the stage with her grandmother's colleagues to remember the 90-year-old senator who passed away last week. Of those paying their respects, Vice President Kamala Harris. When I was sworn into the Senate in 2017, it was Diane who welcomed me. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer even remembering a time when Senator Feinstein broke her foot while in Lake Tahoe. It was the week of the Lake Tahoe Summit, a signature event of hers, one she inaugurated back in 1997 with Harry Reid. He recalled nothing could stop the senator from her passions, even a badly broken foot. All for a cause near and dear to her heart, preserving Lake Tahoe for future generations. As the stories continued, Mariano couldn't help but send off her grandmother the only way she knew how, with a tribute to a song Feinstein used to sing to her as a child. Your family loves you. We are so proud of you. We miss you, and you will always, always be my sunshine. Now, following this memorial here at City Hall today, Senator Feinstein's family will hold a private burial just for close family members. Governor Newsom and new California Senator LaFonza Butler also attended today's memorial. President Biden was not there, but he left a pre-recorded message about working with Senator Feinstein for decades. He had this to say about what today should mean to Americans. And to the nation today, may Diane's life be a reminder that the institutions of our democracy do not only depend on the Constitution that governs our nation, which she swore an oath to to uphold and defend, our democracy depends on the constitution of our character as a people, on the habits, the habits of our heart and our mind that lie deep within us. The Blue Angels flew over today's service. They're already in town for Fleet Week, something Senator Feinstein championed when she was San Francisco's mayor. Senator Feinstein made many visits to the Sacramento area over the years, including a tour of our levees. After Hurricane Katrina in 2005 brought the issue of flood protection to the forefront nationwide. So we dug into the ABC 10 archives to revisit that trip. It was 20 years ago this week that Sacramento nearly was lost to flooding. Representatives say Sacramento flood protection should be the top priority, not just here, but in Washington, since this city is now number one on the list for flood prone cities. Here's then Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and Senator Dianne Feinstein taking a helicopter tour of Sacramento's levee system back in 2006, surveying problems in the infrastructure, inspiring Feinstein to fight for federal dollars. A staunch supporter and really a leader in the Senate for us on flood protection, on getting the money that we needed to, to fix our levees in Sacramento. Heather Fargo was Sacramento's mayor at the time, and U.S. Representative Doris Matsui, whose district includes Sacramento, was in her first term. What I want is their attention so that we can get the money appropriated every year, so that we can get our uh, projects and we get our area here up to 200 year protection. I asked Matsui to reflect on that day with Senator Feinstein. We were walking along the levees and she was so good. And she understood why it was so important to Sacramento. And from then on, I knew I can rely upon her. The main responsibility of a president is to protect all of his people. And the last I heard, we were part of his people. She was a strong leader in, in maintaining water supply, uh, not only for the environment, but for the valley, for the agriculture. That was, I think, thing that a lot of people don't know about and don't realize how instrumental she was in doing that. 
Uh, and of course, she helped get funding for Lake Tahoe. Over her years in the Senate, Feinstein secured more than $1.3 billion for Lake Tahoe restoration and fire resiliency projects. And one of her first items as senator was to create Joshua Tree and Death Valley National Parks. She also expanded Redwood National Park and the Golden Gate National Recreation Area, among other environmental successes for the state. She was absolutely wonderful. Nobody knew the issues as well as she did, whether it was local or state or national. We're going to miss that. If you want to learn more about Diane Feinstein's career, many moments were mentioned at today's service, and it is streaming on the ABC 10 YouTube channel. In other news, the largest health care worker strike in U.S. history continues for a second day. More than 75,000 Kaiser Permanente workers walked off the job yesterday, as we reported on To The Point. Some non-emergency elective procedures like knee surgeries and iron transfusions have been postponed. Kaiser says its hospitals, emergency departments and pharmacies remain open. Two men were shot at an equestrian center in Rancho Murrieta. One had to be airlifted to the hospital. Investigators believe the shooting started as a fight after a soccer match. One man left and came back with a gun. A community wellness center is now open in Sacramento on X Street near Broadway. It's called CORE. It offers basic services and city leaders say there will be workers on site for people experiencing mental health crises. Now this is part of the city's and county's homeless partnership they're offering care to everyone, though, no matter your housing status. And tonight, Granite Bay families are relieved no one was hurt when a Sacramento Metro fire helicopter's door fell from the sky and landed in a backyard. The fire department was finishing a rescue drill at Folsom Lake Tuesday afternoon. They say both doors of the helicopter were secure, but once in the air, they noticed a door starting to slide off. It fell into this man's backyard before crews were able to land. It was super scary. You could smell it, you could hear it. And my son's running it at me. He's like, oh my God, do you see this? I'm like, yeah, let's go. We don't want to see a helicopter land in the backyard. I am glad they are okay. Wow, Metro Fire says a comprehensive safety review is now underway. Next on To The Point, baby spiders, you heard me, are flying across Northern California. And highs today in the mid 90s from Ukiah, Santa Rosa and Fairfield as well as Stockton how hot they could get into the weekend. And celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, one couple finding love and accomplishing the American dream one meal at a time. Just in time for Halloween, spiders are falling out of the sky. You heard that right. Like at the end of Charlotte's Web, if you recall, little spiders are taking to the air on a strand of silk, setting out to start their lives. Well, I spoke with a Modesto man who witnessed this firsthand and a UC Davis professor who explains what is going on. Tom Organ of Modesto sent ABC 10 video and photos of spider webs, some clumped together, some glinting in the sunlight as they float through the air. It's the first time in my life I've ever seen such a thing. We caught up with him by phone while he and his wife were on a road trip. The two of them watched as thousands of these strands floated past and descended upon their Modesto neighborhood. Every place you look, they were there blowing around, lofting in the sky, not falling like snow, but they were blowing in the breeze and eventually coming down to earth, hanging from trees, cars, power lines, fences. It's just perfect for Halloween. Lynn Kimsey is a distinguished professor of entomology at UC Davis. We asked her what's going on with these little spiders. We call it ballooning. When they've hatched and gotten to a certain size, they'll get up on something and reel out a long, long, fluffy thread and go fly. It's, it's totally awesome. And it's a way of getting your babies away from where they're born and, you know, dispersing into new habitats. Sometimes, she says, the threads clump together. I've heard reports from pilots, for example, seeing balls of silk at 30 or 40,000 feet. But don't worry, all of these floaters are babies. You won't see any big spiders in the sky. You know, yeah, you can be grossed out because it's spiders, but think about it, it's kind of awesome to be able to see these things sailing through the air, but totally harmless. I don't know, is it awesome? Uh, I don't know, I got <laughs> chills watching that piece. Well, the good news is it only happens twice a year, in the fall and the spring, but if you don't like spiders flying in the air, then Twice a year is two times too many, perhaps. Yeah. So, but as the professor says, it's a pretty cool act of nature that happens. Uh, she estimates, though, only about 10% of the spiders survive. The rest get eaten by birds and huh. other predators. 
I guess it's nature, right? That's nature for you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, we're going to be dealing with our own nature and a lot of heat headed our way. What we're looking at here is 90s, mid 90s for the highs today. And we're still looking at mid 90s into your weekend. If you had plans to head to aftershock and you're spending a lot of time outdoors, please be ready. Stay hydrated, wear light layers, make sure you're taking care of yourselves and those around you. Heat advisory is in effect up and down the coastline from San Francisco down to San Diego. We're looking at 7 p.m. to about 11 p.m. when it expires, and that's because areas like these are typically getting that cool air moving on shore, but they're not. As long as we start moving into Friday, we're still looking at temperatures around these areas in the mid to upper 80s and low 90s. Now, winds will begin to affect a lot of areas as well, including the coastal range spots as well as areas around the bay. That means elevated fire concerns there into your Friday and even into Saturdays. We're still seeing more of those breezy conditions happening for us. Please be careful of your surroundings. Make sure you're not mowing the lawn or starting any kind of fire in that respect. But we will look at very dry conditions and low humidity levels, of course, making it uh, easy for fires to take off. Let's take a look at everything changing by Monday. Yeah, we're going from extreme heat and mid 90s in October down to upper 70s and rainfall into your evening commute Monday. 5.30 p.m. looks like almost everyone's starting to get that rain from Sacramento North. And then we'll see it continuing on into the overnight early morning hours Tuesday. Most of it gone for the remainder of your Tuesday with partly sunny skies. But we'll look at anywhere from about a tenth of an inch to maybe even a quarter of an inch of rain. And that's mostly for areas right around Stockton North, maybe less than a tenth of an inch. Computer models still coming in on that. Mid to low 90s in those foothills. And the 10-day forecast brings us those mid 90s to low 90s through the weekend. Upper 70s, Indigenous Persons Day as well as Columbus Day there with 70s and 80s next week. Thanks, Carly. Next on To The Point, a story about love and the American dream. ABC 10 is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Nearly a quarter of people in our region identify as Hispanic. And tonight, Alex Bell introduces us to one local couple accomplishing their American dream. They own Roseville's Chicha Peruvian Kitchen and Cafe. The name not only represents their Peruvian culture and struggles, but also their love. I want to be a cook. I think it's in my DNA because I grow up with uh, chilies, spices. Cuando hablamos de Perú, la gente piensa lo primero es en la comida, y la comida está amarrado a tu cultura, a tu familia. Food. The nostalgia of it can take us back to our childhood. Celebrations center around it, history and culture built on it. Food also brought chefs Giancarlo Zapata and Marlene Chavez together. For them, cooking is a tribute to their home country, Peru. Well, I am from Peru. Uh, I am very proud of that. It's the third largest country in South America, and the food is unlike any other Latin American country. We are a multicultural country. We got a lot of fusion, Spain, Italian, Chinese or Japanese. Giancarlo feels a sense of responsibility to teach others about his country through cooking. A passion that started at a young age. Seeing his family cook and share a meal created a connection between them. Marlene's interest in cooking started when she was young too. Both graduated from Le Cordon Bleu in Peru and met in 2009. The kitchen sharpened their skills and their love for cooking brought them together, marrying a few years later. But they knew if they wanted to make their dreams of owning a restaurant come true, they would have to leave Peru. The difference between other countries is you got more opportunities here. If you want to do something, you can do it. In 2012, they arrived in Sacramento starting over. What was the hardest part about coming to the United States? Soy hija única y es bastante difícil dejar a tus papás. The most Heart always is going to be uh, the language because you are like a child. You have to learn to walk, learn to read, learn to speak. Sacramento became a place they fell in love with and began their own family. We got two kids, Valentino and Gianleni. We feel very grateful with this country because they give you the opportunity to, to make our dreams real. In 2018, their dreams of having a restaurant hit a fork in the road. 
They couldn't continue working full time and open a restaurant. So they quit their jobs and started cooking out of their home. So this is the backyard area where you guys had all the tables and everything set up, yeah. This allowed them to save money for their own restaurant. They started with just two dishes, set up seating in the backyard, cafe style. So about how many people would be here at one time in the backyard? Eight tables or six, so 48 people here. Through word of mouth, orders started to pile up. Eventually, they had to hire employees just to keep up. What were the most popular dishes that you guys would serve out here? <laughs> that was the number one. Yes. Number one, yeah. Three years later, they opened Chicha Peruvian Cafe and Kitchen. Everyone who was eating in their backyard was ready to help, offering to lay flooring, hook up the electricity, and paint. We feel very uh, grateful with, with these people because they come in no, no only for the food, you know, they come to support to us. Cuando se abre la, las puertas es un nuevo comienzo. At the corner of Sunrise Avenue and Kirby Way in Roseville sits chicha, which has two meanings. It's a popular Peruvian drink made out of purple corn and previously a derogatory term for people who migrated from small towns and villages to the capital of Peru. Pero cuando vienes de tu pueblo hacia la capital, vienes con todo. Vienes con, con tu comida, con tu cultura, con tus recuerdos, con, tus, con tu música, con tu folclore. People emigrate to the capital to work hard, make their dreams come true, while never forgetting where they come from. We leave our country and we come here with our dreams, with our culture, with, with everything. Chicha is now a term that has been reclaimed. Todo va junto, va a ser yuca, mancora, lomo, macho, anticucho y huancaina con bistec. We make everything from the scratch. They pride themselves on using fresh ingredients, creating their own Peruvian slice of heaven for people to explore decades of heritage and culture. Y a la cultura americana, cuando prueban nuestra comida, sus facciones es como que, wow, nunca he probado uh, combinaciones como la, las nuestras. Back to the Lomo Saltado. It's a um, Peruvian and Chinese fusion here. You know, for the technique also, because we use the soy sauce in it, and also we make it very, very fast with a lot of fire. Sauteed beef tenderloin, stir fried with onions, tomatoes, and soy sauce on a bed of french fries with a scoop of heavenly white rice and an egg on top. Yes, it's delicious. Now to one of their most popular dishes, ceviche. So she's gonna make the ceviche mixto, shrimp, calamari, and octopus on top. It's coming with Peruvian corn, sweet potato, um, Peruvian fried corn also. Y toda esa, esa textura y esa combinación hace que para mí, mi ceviche es, es único. Pescado alamacho frito, pan fried fish topped with shrimp, calamari, and mussels, and aji amarillo a traditional Peruvian chili pepper sauce made in-house. Chicha has been voted one of the best restaurants in Sacramento and Placer County, a nod to their standout Peruvian dishes. But this year, they got an invite they weren't expecting. The Tower Bridge. Oh my God, I, I was very excited. I, I can't believe it. They were now chefs for one of Sacramento's elite culinary events, putting Peruvian food front and center for hundreds of people. And that day, standing on the Golden Bridge in the heart of California's capital, they had made it to their city of dreams. We are happy. The life you always dreamed of? <laughs> yeah. Si nosotros no creemos en nuestros sueños, el sueño no se hace realidad. Their restaurant, now a legacy, they hope to one day pass down to their own children, hoping they feel the same connection to culture, family, and cooking. But this is just the beginning. They hope to open up another restaurant. Me encantaría tener varios restaurantes para que la gente pueda probarnos y pueda crecer esta esta cultura. Remembering where they come from, what working hard means, and never giving up. A dream we all dream. Chicha. If you want to check out Chicha Peruvian Kitchen and Cafe, it's located off Sunrise in Kirby in Roseville. We're back after this. We have breaking news. This is a live look just north of Rio Vista in Solano County. Two people are dead after a car carrying five people crashed into the water. This is at Holland Road and Oxford Road. We have a team at the scene gathering information right now, and we will bring you more as we get it. 
Now, coming up tomorrow on To The Point, tracking El Nino. The weather phenomenon could deliver record snow this winter, but what could actually happen is complicated. So tomorrow we're looking at Australia. Their hot weather and bushfires right now could be a predictor of what El Nino is about to bring our way. Meteorologist Rob Carlmark will be joining us to better explain El Nino right here tomorrow on To The Point. Now, if you have questions about what could be another historic winter with El Nino this year, let us know. You can shoot the team an email at ToThePoint at ABC10.com. You can even text us, 916-321-3310. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Jeopardy's next. Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone, and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com, or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.